Autism really is uh, a spectrum of uh, just, you know, different um, levels of uh, social functioning. Um, depending on uh, if you look at it through the DSM versus the ICD, mm -hmm. uh, the DSM kind of has this one umbrella term of just autism diagnosis, whereas the ICD has things like um, you know, pervasive uh, developmental disorder, atypical autism, all the way up to Asperger's, which you have your range of um, your uh, very low functioning, nonverbal, um, intellectually delayed kids. Uh, with you know the social impairment, all the way up to your higher function kids with Asperger's, who may just you know kind of be um, a little socially awkward, or maybe they can't really handle social situations quite as well as other kids. Um, but they have you know normal IQs. They uh, do well in school academically and things like that. So um, the thought behind it is that uh, during uh, the um, brain development in utero, there are a lot of neural connections that are being made and there are just certain genes in kids with autism in which you know these connections are either not, um, not formed correctly or um, I believe one of the other theories is that um, a lot of the neural connections are actually kind of pared down and just, uh, we develop whereas some of these uh, kids they don't so they have all these extra neural connections that um, kind of you know, make make them more. In the uh, lower functioning uh, kids with autism, uh, they may have developmental delays, so some of them are um, unable to speak, communicate, or they can't verbally communicate, so they can still point, they can do sign language, um, so we're kind of getting more in the mid level here. So. Um, a lot of them can do what we call picture exchange communication, where if they want their, say they want their bottle, they go grab a picture of it and they hand it to the mom. Um, and that's their way of communicating. Um, whereas you have your uh, higher functioning uh, kids um, who, as I mentioned, you know, do well in school academically, you know, you wouldn't even think that they had any sort of um, developmental issues, but maybe they're just kind of bad at maintaining eye contact or you know they just don't play very well with other kids or they don't pick up on the emotion uh, quite as well uh, they don't ever seem like they're uh, having any sort of emotion sometimes they're just very kind of flat affected uh, but otherwise um, you know, they, they walk on time talk on time they talk in full sentences and do well in school kind of you know, benchmark for autism is more of that social impairment, the social functioning part of it. Um, so that includes, you know, just not being able to, you know, fit well with other kids and not being able to emote as, you know, how we would be able to or pick up emotions. Some of them have a lot of uh, repetitive behaviors, the rocking back and forth, the fixating on like the wheels on the toy, or not being able to, um, pretend play. So that being said, there are certain, um, things, uh, or certain other, um, syndromes that can be associated with autism that does include uh, developmental delays, things like uh, Fragile X Syndrome, I believe, um, smith lonely Open Syndrome, and a bunch of other things, Charge, um, you know, look all these things up too. Those can be associated with uh, developmental delays and uh, maybe even some degree of intellectual uh, disability or um, delay, okay. uh, but not necessarily um, you know, all kids with autism have developmental delays. It's just, you know, we have to kind of watch out for those comorbidities that you're associated.